Today I'm going to show you how to create this trippy tunnel animation using geometry nodes, some work in the shader editor, and even a little bit of work in that hidden modifiers panel in the graph editor that isn't used too frequently. Uh, thanks very much to my Patreon and Gumroad supporters. If you want to support me on Patreon or Gumroad, you can, and I really do appreciate it. I'll put those links in the description. This is what the geometry nodes are going to look like, and this is what the shader editor nodes are going to look like. To set up our scene, I'm going to change the top right to the 3D viewport and just make it a little larger. Then I'm going to change the entire middle area to the geometry node editor and just hit new while this cube is selected to create a new geometry node tree. I'm going to hit Andy over to the shelf on the right. I'm also going to hold down Z and move my mouse up to go into rendered mode uh, while I'm over top of this 3D viewport. And we can do this in cycles or EV, but I'm going to choose to do it in cycles. Uh, but feel free to do it in EV. The steps are going to be the same. And I'm going to change it to GPU compute as well. If you don't have that option, don't worry about it. It just helps my system go a little faster. There are these render settings down here. And normally what I do is I take this 4096 and I divide this by like 16 or something. But recently I watched a tutorial by uh, Kaizen or Kaizen. I'm not sure how to pronounce it. But he was talking about how you can also adjust this noise threshold and it actually gives you a bit better result. Maybe set this to 0.1. It's going to be something similar. If you don't do this, your render is going to take a, a much longer time, and it's really not necessary for a lot of these projects. Okay, so the first node I'm going to add in here is going to be a quadratic bezier. So you can search for that, or you can actually go into, what is it, curve primitives? Yeah, right here. You can select it, but I just like searching for stuff. It tends to be a lot faster. And this gives you a bezier curve like this here, and then you can move around the settings uh, like this here. I'm going to set it up as follows. I'm going to set these uh, start coordinates to 0. And then the coordinates here, I'm just going to change the y to 10 and everything else the same, uh, just to 0. And then for the end, I'm going to set the x to 0 and the y is going to be 20. And so if you look at this, it's just a straight line. And basically, it goes 20 units in the positive y direction on that coordinate system there. So this is the curve that's. Uh, and it basically direct our mesh there. So next I'm going to create our mesh, which is just going to be a cylinder. So to do that, I'm going to bring in two nodes. First of all, the curve to mesh. And I'll just place it right here. And then I'm going to bring in a curve circle node. Place it right here. And I'm going to plug this into profile curve like this. And that gives us a cylinder. I'm not going to change too much here. I'm just going to change the radius here, shrink it down a little bit to 0.7. But uh, you can leave it larger if you want. Next, I'll set up the camera. So to do that, I'm just going to make sure that my uh, object is selected, which I'm sure it probably is. Then I'm going to hit 1 on the number pad to get a, a straightforward view, which means you're not really going to see your cylinder because it's uh, an orthographic view. Then I'm going to hit the period slash delete key to censor on everything. And then I'm going to hit the control, alt, and the zero uh, buttons. And that's going to set the current view as my camera view. And then I, with my camera selected, I'm going to hit G and then Z, Z. And then if I move my mouse forward, you just kind of scroll forward. And if I hold down uh, shift, it's going to be a little bit more, um, a little bit less sensitive, I guess I should say. So you can go a little slower. I'm just going to position it somewhere like right here so I don't see outside of my cylinder. To get your geometry nodes back, just make sure you click back on your cylinder there. And you should see this setup again. And I'm going to distort this cylinder using a noise texture. So go ahead and search that. Bring it in here and place it right here. And this is going to direct a set position node. So if you put a set position node right here before the curve to mesh, uh, you can plug the noise into the offset right there. So I'm going to plug the color directly into the offset and just see what happens. So we can see it's actually pushed it a little away from the center point there, uh, basically a little bit in the positive direction of each one of the three axes. And so to fix that, I'm going to bring in a vector math node. And this is really something I should be starting to do more often because it's a good solution to this. Sometimes I just have another workaround, but this is a little bit better. Uh, change it to subtract by opening that up and hitting S. And we're going to set all of these values to 0.5. And that's going to recenter everything. The reason that works is because our noise texture is going from 0 to 1. And so if we subtract 0.5 from everything, it's a... Uh, more of a symmetrical gradient. It's going from negative 0.5 to 0.5. And we could take a vector math node and multiply everything by 2 to get it to negative 1 to 1. 
but uh, it's not really necessary. And we're going to bring one in anyways to do something else. If I change this 3D setting on the noise texture to 4D, it adds in this W value. And if I move this back and forth, we can see it kind of wiggles our, uh, our cylinder around. So if I look at the camera view, we can see it just kind of moves it around like this here. Uh, I actually want to anchor the edge here because if this is moving around too much, we might be able to see around the edge of the cylinder. That's not what I want. So I'm going to bring in something called a, I think it's a spline parameter node. And this actually used to be called something different. It used to be called a curve parameter node. Uh, I think this is pretty much the same thing. It does the same thing anyways. It basically creates a gradient going from 0 to 1 uh, to the length of your curve there, basically. So if we bring the factor out, uh, that's what we want. Uh, I didn't want to do that. I'm going to plug that into a vector math node and set it to multiply. And if we put that into here, now we can see everything moves except for the end there. To get this to move around a little bit more, I'm going to duplicate this multiply node and just add in a value node. I'm going to plug it into the second socket here and let's set this to 10. It's going to make it much more drastic. And now we've moved that W around, we can see it's much more wiggly. If we were to unplug this factor right here, actually let's just mute this uh, multiply node right there. So we can see if we move that around now, we have the camera view. Uh, this is what I was talking about, where we're not really going to be able to see down the cylinder at all times, and it's not going to really give me the effect that I want. I'm going to unmute this node. And by the way, the way that you do that is just by hitting M while selecting that. And I'm going to do a couple things here to make it look a little bit more fluid here. I'm going to change this resolution to a little higher. And that actually makes it look less fluid in the short term. But I'm also going to add a subdivision surface node right here after everything. And I can just leave it on 1. I could put it to 2, but I don't think it's really necessary. Uh, but the main thing is I'm going to change this scale to a much lower frequency. I'm going to change it to 0.2. Basically, I just don't want to be able to see the end here. So if we have this selected, we can look through here. And uh, I just changed that to full screen by hovering over the 3D viewport and hitting Control and Space Bar. And to get out of that, you go up here back to Previous, or you can just hit the same selection, uh, Control and Space Bar. just goes back. But anyways, in this view here, um, if you press Play, or actually, no, I can't press Play yet because I need to move this back and forth. So anyways, if I move this back and forth, I don't want to be able to see any highlighted bits. So I can kind of see the end there. It's probably not going to matter that much. Um, maybe we'll notice it. If we notice it, we can fix it, but uh, it's probably fine for now. So I'm going to animate this W value here, and I'm going to set it to 0. And what I'm going to set here is hashtag frame divided by 30, maybe. Let's see what that looks like. So it's going pretty slow. Um, we can change it to something higher if we want, and it's going to go even slower, or we can change it to something lower, and it's going to, going to, going to go a bit faster. I think 30 is a good number for now. Um, we can change it if we want later. So you just set it like that, and you hit play with spacebar, and it's just going to move around uh, basically for as long as your timeline is. I'm going to add one more node in here, and that is the set material. And I'm just going to place it after everything and just set this to the default material that was on our cube. We can just use that one because it's already set up. Then I'm going to split my screen and change the top area to the shader editor. I'm going to search for a wave texture and just bring that in, place it here. And actually, let's make this a little bit bigger. Just drag that down. So I'm going to set this to Y. And... Uh, Let's plug this into a color ramp. I'm going to set this to constant. And I'm going to bring the white down to something like 0.97 or 0.98. Something pretty far up there so these white bands aren't too thick. Let's just look down here. So if we press play, this kind of gives us a preview of the effect there. It's just this moving around here. And um, yeah, it looks pretty cool for now. So let's. Um, or just reset the timeline. I'm going to plug this into the emission strength down here. What that's going to do is for all the black areas there, it's going to be zero. And for all the white areas, it's going to be one. And then we have to change this emission color to something. I'm just going to change it to white for now, which is just six Fs in a row. Let's look at the principled BSDF there. 
I'm also going to change this base color to black. Then I'm going to bring in a math node and place it here. We'll just change this to multiply by opening that up and hitting M. And then uh, set this to 1. But this is a controller for how intense that emission is. We can also change this emission right here to any color we want. Uh, maybe some cool blue or some yellow. Uh, or animate this so it goes you know, a whole bunch of different places. And we'll just set it to blue there for now. And I'm also going to do one last thing here. And uh, I'm going to change the Geometry Nodes window temporarily to my graph editor to do something with this Multiply node. So I'm going to reset the timeline. Even though it doesn't really matter where you set this keyframe, I think it just makes it a little bit neater. But uh, this Multiply node here, I'm just going to hover the value, hover over the value there and hit I to set a keyframe. And then if I open up this right here, the Shader Node tree, and click on this part right here, uh, maybe I don't have to click on it. I'm just going to hit N to get bring up this uh, little shelf on the right here. And I can access the modifiers. I'm going to bring in a noise modifier. And uh, basically, if we move this back and forth, or move the timeline, we can see this value changes a little bit. And it basically follows this line right here. So if I change the scale, or the strength, or the offset, you know, all these things change the shape of this line. So I'm going to set the scale at 20. The strength at 15.3, the offset is going to be 13, and the phase is 22.2. And, uh, you know, those numbers are more or less random. These numbers are the most important. And these other two are just to get a nice shape here. I basically wanted some dips down uh, basically low here. So the problem uh, that I was having is sometimes when it goes below this line, it shifts off completely. So to fix that, I'm going to bring in a limits node, place it right here, or a limits modifier rather. And I think I have to bring this over top of the noise. Uh, I'll do it anyways. So if I set the limits here, I can uh, basically check these boxes here. And the Y I'm going to set to 2, the minimum Y. And the maximum X I'm going to set to 250. This is basically, um, you know, if I set this lower than 250, it's going to end before my timeline is done playing all the frames there. And then the Y here, uh, it doesn't really matter so much. This min Y is the important part here. So if I set this to low enough, these are going to be dipping below here and it goes completely black. So I thought it was kind of disorienting when it was black for too long. That's why I'm doing this here, so I can move everything up and down. So maybe I'll set this at 3. And then it basically gets dark, but not completely black. Anyway, it's just another option you can do. I'll change this back to the geometry nodes and move this down. And let's look at another option we could do here as well. We could also use maybe a Voronoi or something similar. And um, let's hit Control T, bring up the texture coordinate and mapping nodes. And I'll come out of the distance. And we can even just duplicate this color ramp here. And I'm just going to plug this into the emission strength instead of uh, this right here. So let's look at that. I'll bring this down a bit. And now the value we want to animate is this Y location right here. So let's go frame or hashtag frame divided by 20. Let's just try that out. So it's pretty fast, but maybe you want it super fast. I don't really know. So let's go to frame 200. Looks pretty cool, although it is harder to see, um, you know, the tunnel now. So, you know, it's a bit of a trade-off. You could always go like this. A little easier to see the tunnel now. But I find that those other shapes that we had with the wave texture, because they're more normal, it's less distracting. So let's try changing this around. Maybe go to Chevy Chev. It's something. Maybe even just bring this Y down so it's longer. Hmm. Yeah, it's still not quite the effect I want. But, you know, it's just another option anyways if you wanted to try something. I'm going to plug this back into emission strength from that multiply. I realized I didn't even set up this wave texture to animate down this tunnel yet. So the value we want to animate is this phase offset here. So set it zero with the timeline at one. I'm going to hover over this, or not hover, just click on it. 
and go hashtag frame. And let's go, I think either 10 or 5 is going to work pretty well. Let's try 10. 10 is maybe a little slow. Well, it's up to you. Actually, 10 looked pretty cool. Let's set it at, uh, you know, whatever you want. I'm going to set it at 10. And uh, there we go. That's our project. Thanks very much for watching, and let me know if you have any questions.